Because of the roundish shape of this ruff, I'll cut a round design. And yes, because the Portuguese design is Bopi's favorite design for a round stone, I'll use a Portuguese design. I've spoken a lot about the difference between a Portuguese cut and a standard round brilliant or SRB cut in other videos. So I'll just summarize here and say that the Portuguese fastening design may have 145 facets compared to a standard round brilliant fastening design with only 73 facets. So there's a lot more facets to cut and polish with a Portuguese design than with an SRB. And having all those extra tiny mirror-like facets in the stone gives the stone a beautiful look, which makes the extra time and effort involved in cutting all those extra facets worth it. Rubies and sapphires are corundum. In its purest state, corundum is colorless. However, pure corundum is very rare in nature. Mother Nature always seems to find a way to mix trace amounts of other elements into corundum. What makes an orange sapphire orange? Well, it's the trace amounts of a combination of the minerals chromium and iron that make it orange. Unfortunately, it's almost impossible to find an orange sapphire in large sizes. In the cases where Mother Nature adds a little more of one mineral to orange sapphire, it becomes more pink orange and is called Padparacha sapphire, which is very rare and highly prized. I did a video on Padparacha and it included a lot of other information about sapphires in that video. Corundum is very hard and has a 9 on the Mohs hardness scale of 1 to 10. Diamond is arguably the only natural gemstone that is harder than corundum with a hardness of 10. And that means that to polish our orange sapphire, we need diamond grit. For a lot of other gemstones that are not that hard, we have alternatives to diamond to polish them. For example, we can use cerium oxide instead of diamond to polish any quartz, which includes amethyst, citrine, and ametrine. We can also use cerium oxide to polish the barrel family of gems, which includes emerald, aquamarine, and morganite. Aluminum oxide is a great alternative to diamond grit to polish any garnet gemstone or any tourmaline gemstone. But because of the hardness of nine, cerium oxide and aluminum oxide won't polish sapphire. You need diamond. So in this video, I'll use bat laps by Gearloose and the diamond sticks by Gearloose called pandemonium. And I'll walk through the 3000 grit, 8000 grit, 14,000 grit, and 60,000 diamond grits to pre-polish and polish our sapphire. And I'll also evaluate Professor Ignatius's snake oil, which is another Gearloose product. I like using the pandemonium diamond sticks by Gearloose, but I always use them with water. And the reason is because it's so easy to wipe the facet you're working on when you use water. You can use a tissue to wipe the facet and then get a clear look at your work. In the past where I used oils like WD-40, it was difficult to wipe off the facet and ensure there's no scratch. So I'll give this snake oil a shot and let's see how it works. All right, for our orange sapphire, we finished cutting the first set of facets to a temporary center point. And now we can kind of see where we stand as far as the size of our stone. So when we go to the girdle, which is the next step, we're gonna cut the girdle. This is the smallest point right here. So we want to put this pretty much on the lap and that's gonna be our girdle width right there. It's gonna cut some more off of this side to make it equal, but that's, that's gonna dictate the width of our stone. So the next question becomes, if the stone is that wide, do you have enough space, upper half of your stone, or the crown. So you go to your diagram and you look at the C to W ratio, your crown to width ratio, and you need 0 0.207 of the width. So if the width was 10 millimeters, you would need 2.07 meters here, millimeters here. So we don't have 10 millimeters, we probably have closer to five. We would only need one millimeter here and we certainly have more than that. So we've got enough now to cut the, the crown and 
when we cut our girdle just just to this point and that'll force all the other ones to come in so that it's perfectly round so we're going to lose some rough along here not so much here so that everything ends up right here so i'll, I'll cut the girdle um, with the uh, i could probably do it with the 1200 uh, crystal light because of the size of the stone okay we put in our 1200 crystal light disc lap into the machine and this um, flattest part is at the 90 tooth of our index so we put our 90 tooth of our index even though we start cutting at the 96 according to the instructions and go every six 90 is the flattest part when the stone touches the lap at the 90 tooth it's going to be the flat the flattest part of this stone and the lowest part that will go right there you can see the the index gear jumping that means the stone's touching the lap so right there and if you move it you can hear it it's just above touching the lap so that's going to be good for the 90 and that's going to take care of cutting it right here on this facet first and then all the other facets we won't have to adjust the machine at all and we'll we'll cut one row of our girdle and have a, a real good idea of, of the width of the stone when we're done we started with the 96 the stone touches the lap at 90.21 so if we were to start with this one we would probably grind down a little bit go all the way around every six teeth get to the 90 tooth and it wouldn't even be touching the lap so then we would go back to the 96 cut down a little bit further go all the way around and maybe still not touch the lap at the 90 tooth so by first finding the lowest part of the stone which is the 90 tooth and lowering the stone until it just touches the lap you can then go back to the 96 tooth and you can begin cutting there and it will cut out all the way to 90 and you won't have to make multiple passes all right we're ready to use our 3000 grit diamond on a bat lap with our uh, bat sticks 3000 grit diamond and i'm going to use snake oil instead of water this time from professor ignatius snake oil i've been told that it's um, not so oily which i don't like wiping the oil off the stone i like using water but i'm going to give it a try so i'm going to take the 3000 grit diamond and one drop of our snake oil tooth a 48 degree angle and let's see what we've got okay I've gone around the first row of facets on the pavilion and I think you can see now much easier the difference between a 1200 grit which is what up here and the girdle are and the 3000 grit so we'll continue on with the 3000 grit and then move to the 8000 grit diamond the 14000 grit diamond and the 50000 grit diamond all on bat laps we've finished cutting with our 3000 grit and this is the results and this is just a 3000 pre-polish the girdle and the first tier and then the other tiers are, have not been polished with the 3000 grit yet so you can also see an inclusion right here that runs through the stone so unfortunately mother nature did not want this stone to be perfect it's gonna have a little character of its own and there's really nothing that can be done about that so we'll carry on with the uh, 3000 grit diamond on a bat lap
We've finished pre-polishing with our 14,000 diamond on a bat lap. 14,000 diamond on a bat lap, or 14,000 diamond, they don't necessarily use bat lap, is what they call a polished. This would be polished for a lot of cutters. I'm not saying they're wrong, um, I'm, but uh, this is what it looks like. Uh, I'm gonna go over it again with the uh, 60,000 grit diamond on a bat lap. Okay, we finished polishing our orange sapphire with uh, 60,000 diamond grit on a bat lap. Now we will transfer it using our transfer jig. We will cut the crown or upper half of this sapphire. So after we've transferred our orange sapphire uh, on the transfer jig from the uh, crown to the pavilion with the dops, now we're ready to cut the crown. So to make sure we're in alignment, we put a, a flat metal block and we put our angle at 90 degrees so it's flat and we bring our stone down until it just touches the metal. And when it touches our metal flat metal piece and the angle is flat all the way across that pet piece of metal, then we know we are in alignment and that our pavilion and our crown will be cut as a line. We will also know this when we start cutting our first facet and start uh, setting the girdle width. So now we're uh, we're ready to start cutting the crown. All right, we're gonna we've loaded our orange sapphire into the dock, and we're gonna make our first cut on the crown. So we put our index to 42 degrees. Now, what you need to do when you're starting your first cuts is you need to look at the lowest point. In, in the stone. So let me zoom in here and show you that. And what I mean by that is you can see right here is where there's a chip. So this is the lowest point. Over here on the other side, you'll see that the girdle goes all the way up to the highest point on the stone, whereas here it goes down much lower. So that's about the 60 tooth. And start with cutting at the 42 degree angle with your 60 tooth. So start with the 60 tooth, lower it, till that's touching the lap. Now it's fine, go ahead back to, uh, to 96, the 96 tooth and start cutting there. So we'll use the 600 topper, then the 1200 crystal light, and then then we'll go to the bat laps with our, our diamond and our snake oil, which we're testing out during this video. All right, we finished polishing the table of our orange sapphire. Now we'll take it out of the uh, tabling adapter and soak it in acetone overnight. And then we'll be able to weigh it, measure it, and uh, take a look at it and send it to Popey. In this video, I used snake oil for the first time. And here's my opinion. Is snake oil better than WD-40? Yes. I only need one drop of snake oil, and even when I tried to give the lap the quickest possible shot of WD-40, I ended up with a lot of oil on the lap, which made it harder for me to wipe the oil off when I examined the facet that I'm working on. Is snake oil better than water? I'm not convinced yet. I need to work with both a couple of more stones, and then I'll be able to decide which works best for me. I do suspect that I end up using more diamond compound when I use water than when I use snake oil to lubricate and cool. And that's because the water, even with a very low drip, seems to wash some of the diamond grit off the lap. I'm not sure, but that's just my suspicion. My overall personal opinion on snake oil, I give it two thumbs up. I'll continue to evaluate and see if I can get it to work even better than water. Uh, maybe my technique for wiping the facet could be improved. Until next time, happy faceting everyone.